Hi, in this video, I will show you how to calculate the first mini amount of a lattice. Now, uh, it's going to have to be a lattice of very small dimension because in general, in high dimension, this is a problem that is computationally very hard. So here we're uh, looking at the lattice that is generated by the columns of the matrix uh, uh, minus 2, minus 7, minus 13, minus 47. OK, so something so small that I will be able to do it by hand. All right. So the first thing that I will do is I will change the basis of this lattice. Right. And I'm going to try to create a basis that has uh, columns uh, that are of small Euclidean length. OK, so how do I want to do this? Well, I'm going to take a column, you know, let's just say column one, and I'm going to perform the uh, operation. Column one is uh, replaced by column one plus, say, uh, alpha times column two. OK, so or I mean, I guess in this case, I will do that with column two. OK, I'm going to do column two replaced by column two plus beta time column one. Uh, OK, so these are operations that will change a basis into a different basis. And then how do I uh, so I'm going to eyeball here this, the, 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 the right combination. Otherwise, there are uh, algorithms that reduce a the basis of a lattice, in particular triple L algorithm. So here, how am I going to uh, uh, eyeball uh, what uh, alpha I should use? Well, Let's see, I want to get I want to transform that vector minus 13 minus 47. I would prefer another basis vector that has a smaller uh, Euclidean length. OK, so I'm going to add a linear comp to I'm going to add to it a linear combination of the other vector that is as close as possible to uh, what it is. So, for example, here I'm seeing that multiplying the first. Uh, so doing performing this operation C2 is replaced by C2 minus 7 times C1 seems to get me close to, uh, I mean, seems to reduce the, 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 the length as much as, as possible, right? Because I'm going to have, so 7 times 2 because it's 14, right? So 14 minus 13 is going to be 1. And then uh, below, 7 by 7 is 49, right? So here is what I get. I get the vector. Uh, minus 13 minus 47 and that and that so plus uh, um, 14 49 okay okay so and that is one two okay so this is a much shorter vector so now what do I have I have a matrix, uh, a basis that is made of uh, minus two, minus seven, and then one, two. Okay. Now I could stop here and try to see if if this gives me uh, the shortest vectors. I mean the, the the so lambda one and lambda two, but I can clearly do better, right? So because I see that with one, two, now I could perform an operation of the form C1 replaced by C1 plus some alpha times C2. OK, so what could I do? I could use alpha equals three. OK, so I go C1 plus three times C2. OK, and hopefully this will bring uh, the vector, uh, the second vector that can replace it by something of a much smaller Euclidean length. OK, I mean, much smaller, smaller Euclidean length at this point. So what do we get here? Uh, we get C1 plus uh, 3C2. So that's uh, minus 2 minus 7 plus uh, 3 and 6. OK, and so the result here is so 1 and minus 1. OK, so now I can turn this basis I mean, I can I have a new basis now made of one minus one and one, two. OK, and I find these vectors pretty small personally. OK, and now I have to decide. OK, so could it be uh, so uh, I don't know, but could it be that uh, this vector is the vector of length lambda one? 
So it's the it's a a shortest non-zero vector. And could it be that uh, this vector is a vector of length lambda two? Okay, the second minima, the second minimum. So um, and I don't know that, right? I mean, I'm gonna have to. So here's the thing: deciding if those vectors have length lambda one and lambda two respectively, that is in itself a hard computational problem, okay? Which I'm going to solve here only because I'm dealing with very small dimension and and very small vectors, okay? So how am I going to do this? I'm going to basically going to have to eyeball it, really. So, um, um, and eyeballing it by asking the question, so uh, could it be, uh, so given that I have an integer lattice, right? So uh, all the coefficients are in Z. So I know my, my vectors only have coefficients in Z. So how much smaller, so here, so I have here, the Euclidean length is square root two, okay? So um, could I have a non-zero vector of shorter Euclidean length in that lattice? Well, um, if so, then this vector would have to be essentially either one, zero, zero, one. Okay. So it's got to be either this or this, right? And plus or minus, of course. Uh, so these are the only vectors that will have Euclidean length less than square root two and still, while still being integer vectors. Okay. So do these vectors belong in this lattice is really the question that I'm asking here. So uh, let's do it for, let's say, um, uh, zero, one, uh, 1, 0, and then convince, you can convince yourself that 0, 1 does not belong in the lattice either. Okay, so uh, does 1, 0 belong in L? All right, that's what, uh, what we have to answer. So we need to make, so then we're just doing linear algebra. So if we have X times the first column plus Y times the second column equals, uh, so we have X plus Y and then minus X plus two Y, okay? And could that be equal to one zero, okay? So you can just look at it and see that, uh, okay, well, that would have to be that, for example, so here x would have to be equal to uh, 2y, okay, and then uh, x plus y equals 3y, right, and that would have to be equal to 1, okay, so here we have y equals 1 third, okay, and that's not possible, okay, Okay, so um, now what did we learn? So we have to verify also that zero one does not belong in the lattice, but you know, I will let you do that as an exercise. And so what did we learn? So remember, so we have here that lambda one of our lattice is really square root two. Okay, cool. Uh, so now, likewise, we have to argue. So remember, our lattice is generated by one minus one and one two. So let's write that again. So we are, our lattice is generated by, what I say one minus one and one two, okay? So now we have the following question. Okay, to find lambda two, uh, so we have, so we know lambda two is not gonna be uh, less than square root two, but it could be equal to square root two or it could be the length of of this uh, vector, right, which is square root five. Okay. So um, is this square root five or is this square root two? Right. So for this, uh, one has to again argue. Uh, uh, okay. What would be the vector? What would be another vector that is linearly independent from one minus one, and that has a length square root two? And does it belong in the lattice? So there aren't that many possibilities. In fact, you're just uh, stuck with plus or minus one, one, okay? Because one minus one and minus one, one are already taken. So again, by linear algebra, you can solve a linear system and argue that plus or minus one, one does not belong in this lattice. And therefore, square root five is equal to lambda two of the lattice. All right. 
So with, with that in mind, we have proven that lambda one of your lattice is square root two and lambda two of the lattice is square root five, okay? And this required a little bit of care just because we converged towards a basis that looked like it had short vectors did not necessarily mean that these were the shortest non-zero vectors of the lattice. Thank you very much for watching.